uh, opening up this film to listen to me talk a little bit about the work that we've been doing to increase access to active learning. Um, this is a, a course innovation grant that Les Wade and I recently acquired. Um, and it was in response to some of the innovations that we've been doing in the department to deal with the pandemic. And we found out sort of late last semester, early this semester, that um, that we needed a technological solution to overcome another barrier uh, that we found in trying to put these active learning techniques into our sophomore level lecture courses. And the barrier that we saw was, how can you possibly collaborate with someone when you can't sit next to them, right? So, so much active learning has to do with, with turn to your neighbor, ask a question, turn to your neighbor, work out this problem on a whiteboard, turn to your neighbor, right? And, and how can you do that when the other person is in a breakout room, right, on Zoom? Or how can you do that even if they're six feet away from you, right? And so trying to find a solution to that, that immediate task of how do you collaborate with somebody uh, was the core of what our uh, course innovation grant was like. So I'm gonna give you just a brief overview. So this is, this is what we were doing. So in Physics 240, which was taught by Les Wade, um, he created a course structure where, again, lectures were moved outside of class. This is something that you probably heard a lot about, right? Um, but then every day, the active learning was done by using an electronic whiteboard, right? So this was um, something that was hosted uh, on the internet, and that way students who were physically distanced from each other could write on the same thing, could write on electronic whiteboard. And um, in the first semester, the college provided these little tablets that worked like, uh, you know, it was a mouse that connected to your computer and allowed you to draw on a screen. And that was a that was a, a wonderful opportunity from the college to, um, you know, to allow students to draw and to do this sort of collaborative work. Um, and that was that was where um, that was where Les had had started by designing this. Um, by designing this curriculum. And then as they worked through a whole week's worth of uh, these electronic whiteboards, um, we would get to a point where they had all of the sort of experience and examples that, um, that would have them give them the, uh, the skills that they need to complete the individual problem sets, which would be due following uh, the following week. What um, the, app, the uh, tool that Les found was... Um, was a was a structure called Awe app, uh, and this was really nice because it was web based. So if a student had a PC or a Mac or a whatever, they were able to access the same whiteboard. So it was platform independent, and it worked on desktops and tablets and laptops. I guess maybe desktop is my short term. It, it worked everywhere, and it was fairly easy to get going. Right, you you got a link, you opened up the link, you added your name to it, and then you could write on this whiteboard. And for the students, it was totally free. Okay, um, but what we found, and this was the this is the innovation that we came to HHMI with, was that the students who had tablets, who were able to open up this app on a tablet, were able to interact with the material so much better and easier. Specifically because if you're on, you know, when you, when you were working with a student who was on Zoom, um, you could have the Zoom window open and you could work on your tablet at the same time, right? Also, writing on the tablet, you could see things, you could circle them easier. Um, the tablet was just an easier tool to use than the than the writing uh, than the writing boards were. Um, so, so at the end of the semester, as we were trying to transition from the 240, 240 class, which Les took to the two forty five course, which I took, we went to HHMI and said, "Look, we have um, we have this beautiful course structure that tries to get active learning into the sophomore level class." but we need iPads for it, <laughs> okay? And so HHM, the, this course innovation grant, uh, both funded that the, the work in transitioning to the iPads, but also uh, actually bought the iPads, um, which we were allowed to use this semester. The other innovation that, because I was taking over the course, and if you uh, if you happen to watch my video from the quantum course, one thing, uh, the other part that I added to this was that that um, as the students worked together for a week in these teams, um, they would then also do a team problem set, which was due, um, which was due at the end of the week, and then I would assess that problem set in person, and so that's just a slightly uh, another thing that I added to the end of it. So, <clears throat> also. Um, in moving to the tablets allowed us to look for another solution and and that was half motivated by kind of wanting something that was easier to use on the tablets and might have been app based rather than web based 
But also, our app was bought by this other <laughs> technological solution called Miro, um, which has an app associated with it, and therefore it's ideal for the iPads. Um, and we would worry about um, whether or not every student had an iPad uh, if we didn't provide every student with an iPad, right? So, um, so, so it was a tool that we could use, and the app-based interface really was great. Um, it's not free for the instructor. Uh, it, it turned out that, that this year it was free for all students, and there's a cost associated with that that we'll have to evaluate in the future. But it was super, super easy to use. There was no, there was no learning curve <laughs> associated with it uh, at all. Okay? But it was only made possible because we, every student had these iPads. Now, it is also web-based, right? So if a student forgot their iPad, which happened to surprise, or um, one student preferred using the drawing tablet, they still could do that. Um, but the vast majority of students uh, did, did, did it on their tablets using, uh, using the app. Now, as I said, this is a work in progress, right? It's not quite the end of the second semester, so I don't have any data yet. We're doing pre and post surveys to find out the impact of the technological innovation on students' abilities to, to do the class and on student outcomes, and I hope to report back to you on that in the future. Um, but the soft uh, assessment that Les and I have is that um, students love being able to collaborate with each other using these whiteboards. In fact, um, students came and asked me if they could, rather than turning in their problem set as a PDF, could they do it on a whiteboard and then share that whiteboard with me, to which I enthusiastically said, yes, right? That's a great way to make sure that, that, that students, you know, that both of their pens are hitting that paper and that they're working together in a really collaborative way in order to get uh, in order to get the full use or the full benefits out of uh, all of the active learning components that we've been putting into the sophomore level class. Okay. Anyway, thank you again to HHMI for providing this opportunity, for IR for doing all the assessment, uh, and to Les, who, um, who did really the majority of the work, which is why I offered to make the video.